Welcome here. Right here. Yes, I'm falling. And she keeps calling me back again. Falling. Yes, I'm falling. And she keeps calling. Hours after the recreation of Shining Light Kitchen in 2012 with a new school bus, it pulled up to Pearl Street in Boulder, Colorado. By that evening, every random glowing musical hippie on the block had climbed aboard. We were almost all strangers to each other, and few had ever been to Rainbow, lived in the woods, or traveled on a bus. But together, we made the trip of a lifetime. first year back at the Rainbow Gathering in Tennessee, the bus showed up late and left early, heading back to Boulder with 22 people, but with only a few of the same people who started out there a month earlier. That year, the gathering was just another stop on a journey to anywhere, with everyone invited. Everywhere we stopped was a festival, every meal a party. The nomadic Rainbow Kitchen is a fleeting psychedelic spectacle shining a light on the possibilities obscured by common culture. And it's a dream that you're always just about to wake from. Some of us came back together in the spring of 2013 for the Montana gathering, after a winter of saving money and reflecting. This time we had two buses, Every object I had ever owned barged down from Alaska to the port of Tacoma, and every teepee for sale on Craigslist in the Northwest. There we are. There's the meme. <laughs> Bam! <laughs> Just like that. Look at that shit. It happened. We have two school buses. Where the fuck did this come from? After collecting people and teepee poles across four states, we set up a holding camp outside of Missoula, Montana. Brightest rainbow in the world. Right there. <laughs> I can't it. In our world, at least. <laughs> we just came out of the library TP. <laughs> Some good books in here. The case mush, kicking it with the chocolate face. Little altar. Get a 
Raging Fire going. Welcome here. Right here. Yes, I'm falling. And she keeps calling me back again. Falling. Yes, I'm falling. And she keeps calling me back again. Guess which solstice it was a couple days after. Montana, we showed up in the middle of June and stayed till the last scraps of trash were cleaned up from the site at the end of July. At the peak, we cooked 60-gallon meals in our half-acre kitchen and transported them a mile through the forest each evening. This was the third kitchen we had built in a month. Shining Light had become a nomadic teepee village. <laughs> Just as every year at the Rainbow Gathering, on the 4th of July everyone spends the day in silence until the sun is high overhead. Then everyone moves spontaneously into a circle around the main meadow to join hands and om as an all-inclusive meditation, manifestation, and visualization of a world at peace. Welcome home. Oh yeah, it's Rainbow. Woohoo. By Utah, Shining Light was a camp of over a hundred people, and we had doubled our capacity, serving 120-gallon meals. Dinner is served to people seated in the main meadow in concentric circles. Towards the peak, dinner circle can be in the thousands. 
and each meal is the most glorious harmony of chaos. A dance of anarchy, focused around food served for free. This is going to be history one day. One day they're going to say, how did the Lakotas and Rainbows get together? They're going to say, in the sacred Black Hills in 2015. In the Black Hills, Shining Light was able to help the rainbow gathering on a deeper level than meals in really key ways. 
Shining Light made a two-hour documentary to clear up the controversy around being welcomed by Lakota to gather on sacred sites. We donated a ton of organic powdered herbs and berries to the spiritual leader at Wounded Knee for the Sundance. We brought a group of rainbows to support the March for Leonard Peltier, to clean up the trash at the playgrounds and powwow sites in Pine Ridge. We shuttled Lakota back to the gathering, and we set up all of our teepees for Lakota elders and leaders to live in and hold workshops from, where they talked about unity and building on the Rainbow Lakota Alliance. I see a potential alliance between the Rainbow family and the Lakota Nation that could lead to an actual presence there. A peaceful, direct, unrelenting presence that results in the transfer of those lands into tribal nations' hands. We had a meeting with the Leonard Peltier Commemoration Committee, and they support a Rainbow Lakota Alliance. And how? For the purpose of returning the Black Hills to the Lakota yes. Nation. Aho! Here. Right? Uh, and we have support from the American Indian Movement, Grassroots. We've got a lot of healing, a lot of decolonizing to do, and, and I just wanted to come here because I want allies. When it comes time to come here to occupy the Black Hills, I want you here with us. Yeah, I mean, and if any indigenous people, you know, watch this, I want them to know and understand that, you know, we all have to work together and we can all, um, we can all benefit. After group hug. Can burn for a good cause. Yeah, this to the light of ours. Can burn for a good cause. Yeah, this to the light of ours. Can burn for a good cause. Yeah, this to the light of ours. I'm coming home, I'm coming home, I'm coming home. Keep it on, I'm coming home, I'm coming home, I'm coming home. Keep it on, I'm coming home, I'm coming home, I'm coming home. Turn on the night keep it on. Shine through, shine through, radiating love for me to you, to you, to you, to you. We've got to let the love shine through. <laughs> yeah.
Vermont was really the peak of what Shining Light had ever envisioned being as a rainbow kitchen. Our camp had grown to be a couple hundred people. We brought a dozen teepees that each held song circles and poetry spaces, workshops and ceremonies the entire time. We had a giant library teepee with hundreds of books inside. We had a massive drum circle and parties every night. We had a massive art installation spread out across the entire meadow. Plus, we consistently made 100-gallon meals, and we even hosted a wedding officiated by Vermin Supreme. With no particular power vested in me by anyone. <laughs> and I think they've pretty much already declared it themselves to you here today. You, if these are the terms that you choose to go by, are man and wife. <laughs> or, or conversely, woman and husband. After Vermont, we fed protesters at the Democratic National Convention. We fed people affected by the floods in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. We transported Mardi Gras Indians up to the Standing Rock Reservation. And then we donated several of our teepees to the water protectors. After six years of traveling to rainbow gatherings, becoming a nomadic teepee village, hosting workshops and a library, Shining Light created an aid project called Altruist Relief, featuring a stove system that cooks 100 gallon meals inside the largest functional teepee in the world. So that was the story of how a relay of wild, wandering, shining lights on the psychedelic journey of lifetime started a grassroots disaster relief project from a nomadic rainbow kitchen. Oh